All right, I figured I would give a update on this um, D311 Series H Caterpillar generator that I've been, well, a friend and I have been working on it. Um, he came up for the weekend and we got a few things done on it. It is an absolute mess. Um, this is just a warning when you buy stuff at auction, this is sometimes what you end up with. The engine end, so this forward is great. Got a couple small leaks that we can deal with. Not something I'm really too uh, steamed over. The generator end, somebody that was incredibly dumb got a hold of the generator end and could not follow uh, a simple wiring diagram. Now I will freely admit that I am not that great at power um, or electricity. I, I'm just not, but I can at least figure out a diagram so a couple things when they installed this box right here uh, so this is just a three-phase panel it's got some two-phase breakers on it. it's got some three-phase when they installed this panel in here they actually covered up the wiring diagram which is right behind uh, that side of the box the wiring diagram shows you how to rewire it the rewiring is because this generator is a 240, 480 generator. So it can either be 240 volts or it can be 480 volts. So high voltage, low voltage. The leads coming off the generator, because there are 10 leads coming off the generator, so there are 10 wires coming off the generator head, uh, the configuration of those leads, and like I said, if I don't make sense, it's perfectly fine. I, this is how I understand it. Uh, I am not an electricity expert. There are 10 leads coming off the generator. Those 10 leads have to be either combined or put together in some form or fashion to get the either 240 or, 240 or, yeah, 240 or 480 volts. What caused all the problems is somebody doing the rewiring willy-nilly got in here and rewired them. Now, I forgot to write down exactly how it was rewired, but when we started taking the tape off of all these connections in here, there were, I mean, it was just melted tape after melted tape. So there had been a lot of heat generation. So my guess is it wasn't quite the story that the auction company gave me of oh hey it's got a new starter and you know been using it for uh, construction or whatever it was uh somebody bought it wanted it for 480 and couldn't figure it out and busted it in the process and yeah i mean you know the end of the story they couldn't get it to work so instead of advertising it as such they oh yeah it runs great put a video of it online and let it run so uh, and then, so when I got it, thinking that, okay, produce power, no, no problems were there. I mean, even if it didn't produce power, it wasn't going to blow up on me. Um, but here we are. So what we have done, and fortunately, like I said, there's a diagram behind this box. So we've taken this whole panel off. I would do that. But um, let's see here. Uh, oh, here we go. So. Three-phase high voltage, connect lead lines to T1, T2, T3, the neutral to T0, and then you connect T4 and T7, T5 to T8, T6 to T9. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 leads, like I mentioned. They're just one, 0 through 9. So that is for high voltage. What we found was... A bunch of these leads were connected to one another so in other words and I'm trying to remember exactly what we found but it, it was an absolute mess for three-phase low voltage T1 and T7 are connected together T2 and T8 are connected together T3 and T9 are connected together and then your neutral becomes your T4 T5 T6 and T0 connected together and based in, so what we, what we, I'll show you what we did here. And you have to remember that this all goes through the rheostat. So the voltage droop 
or I, you, I haven't really said this. So this is the voltage rheostat right here. So it all does need to go through this transformer up in there, but that's kind of a different story. Um, and you can kind of see on the end of these wires here, all of the residual just burned off um, electrical tape. So, but in the process I got, and I needed to get a, uh, let me find my tool here, something cool. So something I had wanted for a while was a battery crimp end. So I've got that now, so now I can crimp battery ends. So I am pretty excited about that. Finally had a reason to spend the 30 bucks on one of those. <clears throat> because all these ends had to be crimped. Because, oh, they've got all kinds of messes in here. We, we worked with what we had some, but um, anyway, if you look, all of these lines fortunately are labeled, so if you can see that is number eight right there. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and so how we've got all this, oh, this is just hard to show. So there's T8, it's upside down. But T8 is right there. And so all of those go up through the, um, go up to the uh, one of the main uh, transformers, which I'll get up on top of the machine and show you. Try not to fall in the process. So the main transformer is right under here. It's right there. Um, hopefully we haven't blown that up because I really can't find a spare one of these. Um, really fortunate that Caterpillar, much like Deer, has really good parts catalogs. Um, if anybody is watching this video in the next week or so and knows a wiring diagram that I can understand uh, with some, I'll say, uh, helpful pointers like a service bulletin or something, I can't seem to find one of those. But if you if you know of like a technical manual or something like that, please let me know. <clears throat> so what we've got is we've got all those leads going to the transformer, and then coming out of the transformer, they go into this box, and that's the three-phase power. Um, not too big a deal. So when we started it up, <clears throat> um, this is my new uh, OEM reactor. So reactor A. Um, Found a company that had one in stock. I think it was like 80 bucks. It's that box right there. I don't want to, I'll probably fall off if I, it's that box right there. If I uh, get down, try to bend down on there. So I got this new reactor. <clears throat> and uh, so what we did to monitor everything, we monitored temperatures. Um, we cranked it up after we put the reactor in here thinking it was a, just a reactor problem and we just put a uh, just an infrared heat gun on this and even at low idle uh, voltage wise we were at like 300 and some odd volts and uh, we were pushing this was pushing like 130 degrees like two minutes after we started it up at idle so got a problem that's what led us to get to do the rewiring so then we think we get it rewired properly. We've got a couple other things that they screwed up. And so we got it done right. This is still getting somewhat warm. I don't know what the spec is on temperature wise, but I don't want to ruin it because they only have, I believe one more um, that I can find. So I don't want to ruin this reactor here. So how we have this is we have, um, we've got a normally closed contact these two are called choke assemblies. We have a reactor. Um, this is our, I don't know what this does yet. And then we have one of our transformers for each of our phases, I believe. And then we have our bus bars. I'll call them a bus bar. And what was happening is this was getting hot. And then this resistor right here was getting hot. This resistor was approaching 300 degrees. So, it's doing its job it's creating heat like it's supposed to um, so once we got everything rewired uh, we thought we were doing pretty good but then this uh, rectifier or voltage regulator whatever you want to call it down here um, on our last run started sparking 
Um, and so my guess is, is the problem is, is there's a whole lot of components here that I. All right, dead battery. So <clears throat> I think at the end of the video, I was talking about this uh, rectifier sparking here. Uh, so I've been able to find this rectifier and I think I'm just going to go ahead and replace that. The only problem is the wires are actually soldered on to the four places of the rectifier. So we will definitely have to uh, delve into some of that. But I think the big thing here now is once I replace that, I'm going to try to run it again, see how much heat we're going to generate here, and also see how much voltage I have at the terminals. Um, see what I have across two phases of power. Um, see if I have my uh, 240 that I'm looking for. This contactor right here, I've found a replacement for it. I don't necessarily know that it's bad. I'll take you over here and show you the um, diagram. So here's the diagram uh, in, no, uh, let's see here. So the power rectifier right here is in, and P is the heat sink. So I think that's right. I would really have to sit down and think about it. Anyway, um, I've got to sit down and look at this, but I think that's what we're going to charge. But uh, here is the uh, U is our relay, and it's normally closed, and I haven't seen it open, so I don't necessarily know what that relay is for. But it, I'm serious, if anybody uh, knows where I can find a little bit better manual for this thing, I would be greatly appreciated, or it would be greatly appreciated. I have this one right here, and this is just self-regulated, and this is operation maintenance instructions, but I haven't been able to find a service manual for these generators. So this just kind of gives you the general idea um, of what's going on. I mean, you can even wire this for single phase. Um, so single phase, two wire, low voltage, single phase, three wire, low, high voltage, single phase, um, two wire, high voltage. So when I mean, you can do it single phase, um, so it's just a matter of, I got to figure out what exactly is going on. Um, and I'm going to learn a little bit more about this machine, but that is, I mean, that's why I bought it. Uh, I didn't necessarily intend to have to rewire it like this. Um, so that is one thing that I'm not necessarily happy about, but we will, uh, we'll get there. So just wanted to give an update on that, uh, kind of, if you're interested in it, um, at the very least, I at least have a, a D311 running uh, Caterpillar engine, even though the, the governor is all wrong for it. But, you know, we'll get there. So, got any questions, comments, leave them below. Thanks for watching.